Okay, so my name is Kat Martini Rashid. I have Sleepy Hollow Chesapeake's. I have been in to Chesapeake's for 34 and a half years. Wow. I started, um, I got into Chesapeake's because my dad is, we're from San Luis Obispo, California, and we have a ranch. He has ranches out there. Mm -hmm. And he would have a dog for every bird, Mm -hmm. which seems kind of crazy, but that's what happens. And um, when my ex and I were in North Dakota, we happened, I happened to find a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Didn't know anything about him, but I really liked the breed. The mom was an actual working dog on a ranch and would pull stuff, and she was probably... She was bigger than the standards, but she's, I would say, at least 120 pounds. Wow. Solid muscle, built like a tank. And um, she was going to have puppies, and we got um, a pup, and we ended up sending her away for training. And I brought Bear back to California, and she retrieved pretty much any bird she can get in water, on land. Um, from ducks to doves to quails to pheasants to partridge, everything. So that's how my journey started with Chesapeake Bay Retrievers. Mm -hmm. And then um, about eight years ago, I decided to get into breeding Chesapeake Bay Retrievers. I had found out that the breed was kind of gridlocked with a lot of carriers, DM, EIC, and PRA. So I decided to help the breed out and try to breed um, clear dogs that weren't carriers. Mm -hmm. And so that's our focus is um, temperaments and um, breeding clear carriers. Uh, Chesapeake Bay Retrievers are one of the most versatile retrievers and the original retrievers around. They, my dogs, um, the males show they do hunting, they run hunt tests, and they also are top therapy dogs. Our female dogs, um, they do hunt testing, and they're also top therapy dogs. Mm -hmm. And mind you, all these dogs are our family. Mm -hmm. So they're very, we're very involved with them. And um, one of Brutus, he would go to, before COVID, he went into a third grade class where they saved tokens for him to go twice a week to read to him. And he's what is called a sedge. He's a red. So we have red blonde, which is dead grass. And then we have brown, dark brown Mm -hmm. in our breed. And their coats are uh, curly to wavy and oil. They have oil on it. So they're water resistant. They are actually made to break ice in the Chesapeake Bay. Mm -hmm. And they have kind of webbed feet. They have a webbing in their feet. So it's kind of cool. Right. They're really good dogs, and they're very smart and um, very intuitive. They pick up on your emotions and with our dogs through therapy. So when they're out and they know somebody's not, you know, feeling well or something's going on, they will go, you know, will walk over and they tune into it. And, um, Brute Lily and Osiris's mom is actually a diabetic dog. She picked that up naturally with for my husband. And then um, Lily is also a diabetic dog. So oh. they're pretty in tune with their owners. Oh, they're cool. very friendly and they're very family orientated and they're very, very loyal dogs. And they, we call it meet and greet. So people that come to our house, we have to invite them in and then the dogs are okay, but so they're very, they're also protective of their families. Mm-hmm. So, um, but they're really great dogs. Mm-hmm. So that's how my journey started. What sets them apart is that they are so versatile in no matter what they do. And they pick it up really easy. So if they're not out, you know, showing, it depends upon what color you put on them. Mm-hmm. Mine know by different colors what they're going to do. Um, I actually have, uh, for Brutus, uh, Lydia Havansky runs him, and then for Osiris, uh, Darcy and Anthony Cantor, their handlers, they run them. So when they put their leads on, they know that they're going into a show ring, and then if we have their flat collar on, they know they're going in to work with um, therapy, and then when they do their hunt testing, they have no collar on, they have a lead, and they walk up to the line. Mm-hmm. So, and what's great about them is um, 
they pretty much, uh, so with Brutus, I have a friend, uh, Sunny, she will run him uh, for Master Hunter. So they, they are so good about working with other people. That's really what sets them apart. Mm-hmm. That and their loyalty to their owners and family. Well, their original purpose, they were um, water dogs. There were two Newfoundland dogs that were um, in a shipwreck. They ended up getting, Cantor and Sailor ended up going to, to two different homes. And they were, um, I think one was a doctor and one was a, a businessman. And then they ended up getting bred along the way. And they say that um, they were bred out of New Finland coming mm-hmm. from overseas and the boat shipwrecked. Mm-hmm. And then um, the dogs ended up, I think one of them was a sedge, which is red, and the other was a darker brown. And some say it was a flat coat. If you look online, you'll hear different things about what happened and how it happened. And it was off of the coast of Maryland. I know that. Mm -hmm. And it was, I believe it was back in 1807. The dogs were a cross between two dogs, and then they ended up um, being duck dogs, and they used to retrieve, I think by the mid-1880s, if I recall right, the breed was reported to have retrieved over 300 ducks in the water. As you know, Maryland, it's pretty darn cold out there. They just have evolved from these two dogs that started this whole line of amazing and phenomenal dogs. I believe it was two different Newfoundland puppies. They were rescued off the coast of Maryland. Uh And one was a red dog and one was a dark dog. They really don't, I mean, from the history that I've read, they really don't tell much, except it possibly could have been a flat coat or a curly coat retriever. Uh So, but the offsprings um, ended up being uh, the Chesapeake Bay retrievers. Bay retrievers. Oh gosh. You know, I've been pretty fortunate. Um, I have had, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Linda, she's got, um, uh, she has one of the oldest lines of Chesapeake. She has the fireweed line, and we have, um, and her name's Linda Harger. She has the line of, um, she does field trials, mm-hmm. and she also had um, uh some dual champions which is really hard to do so they get a champion in show and they get a champion in field trials Mm -hmm. so they ended up with a dual champion then i've had diane baldwin upon hollow who's um uh an older more experienced uh breeder and then um i've had uh long meadow She's helped. Laura has helped me out also. Mm-hmm. So I've had, I've been pretty fortunate. And then there's um, Sandy Dollar. Sandy's um, helped us out a lot. My dogs are descended from all three of those, from uh, Laura, Diane, and Sandy. So um, that's been pretty good. And then the Chesapeake community is a very uh, tight-knit community. Mm-hmm. We're all pretty much there to help each other. And, you know, we try to mentor a lot of people. So if we don't know the answers, we always try and go get answers, Mm -hmm. which I think is really good. Uh, We had an incident um, back in the day. It was like the pups will be four in May. I had uh, a litter, my my first litter I had done in with Chesapeake's and we ended up having an emergency C-section and then... uh, Nahara ended up with staph infections, so we had to, you know, I had a lot of people calling, a lot of people helping. Mm -hmm. So, but the funny story in that is uh, the pups actually went to my uh, friend Sunny's house, and her lab nursed my puppies for a month. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, she has fill trials. So, Mm -hmm. that's Aunt Sunny, and that's who'll be running Brute Master. But um, we had, you know, I had a lot of people calling and I had a lot of people um, suggesting different bottles to use and all sorts of stuff. But we had five pups, and we ended up losing two. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, so I guess for mentoring, it's just, you know, 
everybody reaches out to everybody and every, you know, we all try to help each other out. Mm -hmm. So that's the good thing about the Chesapeake Bay, uh, retriever community. Mm -hmm. And that goes for, you know, in Canada, the U S Ireland, Germany, all over. Mm -hmm. We all try to help everybody out. So a hunt test is pretty amazing. They consist of, um, you have junior hunter, senior hunter, master hunter. By the time they're running master hunter, a lot of people have pro trainers. And there are amateur people that run their dogs too. But uh, by the time you see a master hunter out there, and there's some pro trainers, um, Colin, there's Bucko, Andy. There's a bunch of them out there that are, are good trainers. And um, but by the time you see these dogs out there, you're looking at probably, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 running mm-hmm. in Master Hunter. But it consists of, so the dogs are trained to, uh, we call it force fetch, where they learn to pick up objects when they're told to and they hold them. And that also goes along with their obedience. So in junior, they are tasked with... Um, picking up two birds separate times on land and then two birds in the water. And they are sent out there to do that. Then they come in, they give their owner the bird and you know, you're judged by two different judges. Mm -hmm. And then as they progress, um, they have more tests that they go through senior. They'll have more avenues that they have to go through and then they're critiqued heavier and then by the time they get to master, they pretty much have to be, you know, perfect to do this. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's it's like going from grammar school to community college to university mm-hmm. is how I would put it. But by then, the dogs are really um, well tuned up and they know their jobs. And, you know, it's it's. It's like taking, I guess, your SATs sometimes, I would say, or you're getting into grad school. You know, these dogs are so amped up. They know their job. But when you get to a hunt test, mm-hmm. the energy there is like electric and the dogs are on fire and they're all ready to go and they're just so amped up. So, you know, sometimes they make mistakes, mm-hmm. but it's it's pretty good. And in the hunt test world, everybody is cheering for the dogs to pass. The pro trainers are really amazing. They, you know, they give everybody advice if you ask them or, um, you know, and you have, usually you have friends there and you Mm -hmm. guys are, you know, talking about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So they do showing, which is really well. They do um, therapy. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, they're diabetic dogs. Uh, Casey Owens trained some up in Utah. I have a friend, Sonia. Her dog is a service dog, and he shows, and he does agility and all sorts of stuff. And then um, you have dock diving, mm-hmm. which is pretty amazing. These dogs, I mean, they jump and they hold titles, and they even go invited to world records even. Mm-hmm. There And then, of course, there's the obedience where the working dogs go further and further. And then agility. They have barn hunt. They have, I mean, there's, with Chesapeake, there's no limit. Mm-hmm. They just, they can do it pretty much all. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you have the Chessies that work in the hospitals. They go to respite. They go to hospice. They, I mean, retirement homes. Uh, some of my dogs go to retirement home, some go to the hospital, some of them go to elementary schools. You, um, oh, and then I have a friend, Karen Marcotti out in Oregon. She does search and rescue with her dogs. And then Kathy, um, I believe her last name's Luton. She's got a search and rescue dogs. These dogs are amazing dogs when they're in the rescue world. Mm -hmm. They're just on fire. They pick up on cadavers. They find lost people. They just are amazing. And then um, Karen's dogs also um, show. So uh, she has one, Rose, who's really cute. She's very versatile. She does, uh, you know, rescue work, and she shows. So it's pretty amazing what they can do. I don't think there's anything they really can't do 
once mm-hmm. they put their mind to it, to be mm-hmm. perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. They're just so willing to do stuff for you, and they're very powerful, and they're very intelligent dogs. People say they're stubborn, but for the most part, um, they're very soft dogs. They're very gentle, and the stubbornness comes about, I believe, you know, in my personal experience of 34 years, it's, you know, you're asking a dog to do something and if they haven't, uh, if they don't understand what you want or they haven't learned to do what you're asking, they're trying to figure out something to give you. Right. So I don't, in my opinion, they're not stubborn. Mm -hmm. They just may not have known what to give you. Mm -hmm. They absolutely love the water. I have one that loves the water, Salem. And uh, she can turn on the bathtub, she can turn on the sink, she can turn on the hose. <laughs> I mean, they're very, very smart. And they use their paws like you swear they have opposable thumbs. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty amazing what they do. They have had a couple of dogs used for police work. We have um, actually when ne- there was a dog out in Maine that got um, shot, Nemo, a couple of years back, we offered a puppy for them, but we hadn't heard back from them Mm -hmm. but um they are really good in that aspect i have a friend that in spain david he uh took five of them through the program at the airport out in spain Mm -hmm. and they're actually bomb dogs wow Mm -hmm. yeah he had seven but i guess only five made it two washed out they're pretty uh they're pretty courageous dogs yeah, that's... I mean, we had we had one that my daughter was out in the woods hiking, uh, Savannah, my 22-year-old, and there was a bear out there, and, you know, they, they're they pretty courageous. They will get in front of their owners mm-hmm. to protect them, but she just grabbed the dog and took off. Luckily, the bear didn't see her. They, the dog saw the bear, though, mm-hmm. so... They, they are friendly, though, if, if they are socialized properly. Right. So we always, I always tell people when they get their dogs, you know, the pups, they need to be petted at least a hundred times within two mm-hmm. months, mm-hmm. you know, take them out, get them socialized. Um, and, you know, just have a good time, mm-hmm. but they definitely are. That's why we call meet and greet because Chesapeake's, you know, they're very friendly dogs. They're very lovey, caring but you're not going to break into a house that has a Chesapeake. Mm-hmm. So they're very protective over their owners. But, you know, when they come to, like, we live on over five acres. So when they come to the gate, you know, with UPS and everybody, they know the dogs. Um, but when there's people that come to the gate, the dogs go out there, they meet them. Oh, it's okay. You know, mm-hmm. mom said it's okay. This is fine. And then they're okay with it. Mm-hmm. They just go about their business. But, you know, on with most dogs and with Chesapeake's, I mean, and even other dogs, you know, they're not going to let you on the property unless the owners is like, oh, it's OK. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but yeah, they are fiercely loyal to their people, you know, and they're also are such good dogs with children, mm-hmm. which is really great. My 37 year old when he was young. I would tell my, my first Chessie bear, go fetch up Ryan. And she would bring him in by the pants. Wow. He was like two or three. I mean, she didn't hurt him. You know, he'd be like in the, um, the living room and she would, you know, nudge him and, um, just get him over to me. (laughs) But he, he loved her. He would just, you know, she would sleep under his crib and, you know, or actually his sister's crib. And then, you know, when the baby started fussing, she would come and get me like, oh, there's something wrong. But, you know, babies fuss when they're they're newborn. Right. So, you know, that um, the males, the top of the standard, I believe, are 70 pounds or excuse me, that's the female are 70 pounds. Mm-hmm. And then um, they should be no longer from, I believe, the. 21 to 24 inches and they um like i said the top is 70 pounds mm-hmm. and then the males should be no more than 80 pounds and they are i believe 26 inches tall mm-hmm. from the chest 
We go, well, actually, our ideal standard is we go for temperament and builds. So, um, with my two, I have two male stud dogs that uh, I bred and raised. Um, Osiris went out and showed, and he got his champion in about a month, which our handler told me, don't expect that. Again, that's very rare. So, his brother went out. I believe in January, last January, and he went from, you know, just no champion to almost a grand champion. He's got one more show to get his grand champion, and he did that in two months. Mm -hmm. So I go for temperament, confirmation, and the standards. Mm -hmm. So, and our line seems to be all sedge. Okay. So, which was red. Mm Mm-hmm. Are they pretty hardy as far as... Yeah, they're very hardy. Mm -hmm. So we have pups up in Alaska that are doing really well, and they are on some of the islands, Thor's out there. Mm -hmm. And um, he lives... The owners live off the land, and they hunt, they fish, Mm -hmm. and he gets into the rivers out there. Wow. And then we have um, a couple other... We have... We know a lot of other people... um, Gosh, Carly, she's out there, and she's got chessies, and they swim, I think, in the Aleutians. And then um, there's just all sorts of Chesapeake's out in um, Alaska. And Sue Ellen, she's got some chessies, and they're out there, too. And then Kathy, actually, uh, she has, Kathy Olden, she has um, Chesapeake's out there. And they also, I believe, they're on her sled team. Wow. She meshes with them. Wow. So they're pretty hardy. They have a really nice thick coat. So when summer comes, like even here in Washington State, Mm -hmm. it gets really humid and it hits about 90 sometimes. Uh, So they blow their coat. Mm -hmm. So the top coats gets, uh, the undercoat gets blown out Mm -hmm. so that they can cool off. So they're pretty good about it. And as long as, you know, they're doing their thing and they're in water and, um, Ours do, ours do really well, but we have big baby pools outside during the summer, so they play a lot mm-hmm. if they're not swimming in the pond or the lake or the river. They have pools with uh, sprinklers in it that they play with. Cool. Yeah, but they're really they're really hardy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have ducks, and we have chickens, and we have geese, and uh, Nahara, the mom of them all, she goes out there and checks on them. Mm-hmm. So, and then we have cats, our neighbors have cats that run through here and they just look at, but they're so used to it that they don't, it doesn't bother them at all. Mm -hmm. So we have coyotes out here that come through that, um, they don't put up with, Mm -hmm. they'll run to the gate and bark at them. So they're working on getting DM out. Um, DM is where their hips start dragging. Mm -hmm. So if you bred two carriers together, they would be affected with DM. And from what I've seen, it's it's pretty gruesome. And then PRA has to do with the, I believe, the eyes. Mm-hmm. And then um, EIC is electric. It has to do with the heart. And when they start running, they just fall over. Mm-hmm. And their legs are still going. So they're working on getting that out. But the real, I think the real bugger is a DM because mm-hmm. they're doing a lot of um research on that and mm-hmm. getting stuff done and the chesapeake bay retriever club is really good about um getting research done and donating and you know figuring out what the heck's going on so the main club the chesapeake club is really really good about that you know and they send out newsletters and they keep people apprised and they actually have a um Chesapeake book, I think it's chesapeakebook.org, where um, they keep records of all the dogs, and they're constantly updating mm-hmm. on the dogs. So we, a lot of us uh, do health testing before breeding. We do uh, hips, elbows, and eyes through OFA, the Orthopedic Foundation mm-hmm. Association, and then uh, a lot of us pay to have it put up on OFA. So that people know that these dogs are tested and Mm -hmm. what's going on. And it's just, you know, a record for the breed and the health. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would like to see change as far as maybe like the standard or? um... Well, I think the 
standard pretty good, actually. Okay. Yeah. The dogs are pretty, you know, when you see them working or in show or in the field or even being service dogs, I mean, they're pretty amazing dogs. Mm-hmm. So I think if, you know, everybody seems to keep to the standards, so I think it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, when you mix the East Coast, the East Coast, I think, has a little bit more bone weight than the West Coast. So when you mix the two together, they get an amazing dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the dogs are amazing, but it's, I like, I like the bone weight in the dogs. Mm -hmm. That's what I find pretty amazing. Because, you know, they're made to break ice and swim and they just, they're just powerful Mm -hmm. and they're just amazing. The thing about Chesapeake's are like most, I don't my litters they're born brown Mm -hmm. so chesapeake's blow their coat two or three times before they get their final color by ear Mm -hmm. so for example brute was brown when he was born he was dead grass at three months and then at five months he was fire engine red and then he's just i call it strawberry blonde now Mm -hmm. so but you know um with everybody i always tell people i can't i can't guarantee coats because I don't know what they're going to blow to by time, you know, mm-hmm. they're older. Mm-hmm. So but the, it's not like how people are redheads have fiery tempers yeah. or any of that. Yeah. No, they're all pretty. I mean, they all have really good temperaments, you know, but there's a difference in drive, not related to color, but related to um what you're trying to develop more in dogs. Mm -hmm. Some people are, you know, the show aspect. Some people are the field trial aspects where they're driven. Hunt tests, they're driven, uh, you know. And then um, when you go into therapy, they need to have that really great off switch where they can turn the drive off and focus on their therapy. Mm -hmm. So, but I'd say for the most part, a lot of them have really great off switches. Yeah, that's that's important for me. <laughs> As, it, no, truly, yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. I'm Brutus. He's, you know, he's watching me and laying there watching. <laughs> so, but it, this is his time in the house where, you know, well, he's always in the house, but he knows, you know, when we're on the phone or if we're doing something, he's right there, but he's quiet and he's always watching. Mm-hmm. So, and then, you know, when you're off the phone or you're sitting down, then the toys come out. So, and they really like glow in the dark chuck kids, <laughs> which I really like. Cause when they go outside at night to go to the bathroom, you know, they usually have a chuck it. So you know where they are. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty funny. actually. <laughs> <laughs> All you see is this ball bouncing around with the dog running. And you can't really see the dog cause they're out in the field. So our dogs are in the house, but um, when I leave, I have um, an air-conditioned rec room downstairs, Mm -hmm. and I have uh, eight by ten runs there. Okay, cool. And the dogs are our family. They're not just kennel dogs. Mm -hmm. So they interact with us all the time, and they're always with us. And um, if they're not with me, uh, like Brute, he usually goes up to see his aunt, Sunny, in Idaho. So, and then she'll work with him this, uh, gosh, when, uh, probably in April, he'll probably go up and visit Aunt Sunny, and then he will work on his testing for master. Mm-hmm. I promised Sunny she could run him in master, so. Um, but he loves his aunt, and again, Aunt Sunny's the one that had the lab that nursed my Chesapeake, so. Yeah. She's very well loved and very trusted with my dogs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it really is. Daisy was a great mom to these pups. She, you know, she nursed them. She cleaned them. She, you know, uh, taught them manners and stuff. So they were there about, I think they were there over a month, a little over a month. Mm -hmm. But they did really well. And Sunny and her husband's Charles was really good with the the pups and kept me updated because it was pretty, it was pretty hard. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, um, by the time we were done with uh, Nahara staff infection and everything, it was probably about $9,000 by the time we were done. Yeah, it was crazy. And we had insurance, but then there was loopholes, so. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
So it took us a while to pay it off, but it was worth it. Yeah. We got Lily, Osiris, and Bruce out of it. And, uh, you know, they were up there with Daisy. So, and he got to see Daisy and he thought he was all big. And then she put him in his place, <laughs> you know, cause that's their second mom. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was amazing how well, um, and Daisy is, she's a Labrador and she's really, she, she's a blonde She's a yellow lab. She was just gorgeous, but it was amazing how well she took to these puppies. I was very blessed, and that's when, again, when the Chesapeake community came together, and that's how Sunny and I became really good friends. Mm-hmm. So, and then when um, when my dogs show and they get, you know, their champion, I always send Daisy something and Sunny something, and then, you know, so she got something from O, and then she got something from Brute, and then when Brute passes as Master Hunter, I'm also a master quilter, so I've made a really nice quilt for Sunny. Oh, that's cool. For when that's done. Yeah, you know, you want people to know they're appreciated. Yeah. You know, even if you pay somebody to help you with your dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, my thing is, like our handlers, when they show them, I always give them gift for Christmas. I want them to know that I appreciate their time and effort, even though they're paid for it. I want them to know that they are truly appreciated for all they've done for my dogs. And then I do all the therapy training for my dogs. Uh, I also evaluate therapy dogs. And I also uh, judge junior and senior hunt tests. And then I will be, um, I also do uh, canine good citizen testing. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, you know, when you, um, so the dog should have basic obedience, you know, sit, stay down. And we bring in different props, like a walker, you walk by and you want to see how they react. And then I have um, a friend that does that and she'll come in. I have crutches that they use and they come in and they'll, you know, stop and talk to the owner and, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes be a little loud and, you know, or you'll drop some stuff. You just want to see how the dog reacts. Mm -hmm. And then we also have, um, my dogs are also therapy dogs, as I've said. So they are the test dogs, uh, depending upon who I bring in. But, you know, you also want to, you go up to the prospective client or person and you have your dog and they have their dog. You want to see how their dog reacts to another dog. Not that they're in their bubble, but, you know. Usually the one's on the left, one's on the right. So you want to see how they interact. And then you have, um, usually it's in an area. I usually do it at PetSmart or Petco where it's kind of busy. Mm-hmm. You know, and the managers, I go in and talk to them. They're okay with it. And um, so that there's a little bit of commotion going on. And, you know, you have dogs coming and going. So you see how they interact with them. Mm-hmm. Some dogs, some dogs do really well. They don't care. And there's... I think in all the times um, I've been a therapy evaluator, I think there's been less than five who haven't passed in five years. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it's pretty good. And a lot of it, um, teachers are coming in now to do it. I just um, certified 10 teachers sent off their paperwork. So it's, it's really a good thing. And I think it's pretty amazing that the schools are letting teachers bring in therapy dogs mm-hmm. more and more. And I think that's great for some of the kids because they, they really need it. Yeah, I definitely so. agree. Well, usually if it's pretty attentive and it's watching you, but it's not, um, where it's pretty laid back, mm-hmm. um, it's hard to say because, you know, just because you see a pup looking like that doesn't mean that's how they really are. Right. I look for the get off switch. You know, mm-hmm. my dogs are, when they're puppies, they're go, go, go. You know, they get their bumpers. They do this. They do this. I mean, like, you know, some dogs can, some puppies could drive you crazy because they want to fetch, 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 mm-hmm. fetch. But when you bring them into the house, it's like, boom, that's, that switch flips. Mm-hmm. And they're more chill. And they come and lay down by you or you teach them by, you know, sit down and you pet them and you're doing your thing. Um, People are on their phones or I'll sit on the couch and read a book, you know, and I have um, the dogs coming up 
and the the puppies would come up like Brood or Osiris and lay by me. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's one thing about Chesapeake's. They like to be touching their people. Mm -hmm. They have to be touching their people, whether it's their foot on you, their butt against you, their head on you, whatever. They have to be touching their people. And that is one thing I absolutely love about them. So I think just temperament and a good off switch and how attentive they are watching you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.